Yeah, some of us got voices we got to deal with. Voices. Our own voices. People's voices. Dead voices. Every night. A whole lot of bad, messed up, don't let your mother know things I've done, kid. Try to keep from hearing them, but they keep talking to you. You got them too, I'm sure. Voices, no names. Welcome to another episode of Lighting Alchemy. The images you are watching are from a recent short I shot that was produced and directed by A.J. Brooks, titled Voices from the Dark. I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you how we accomplished a big budget feel for a no budget production. Regardless of the budget, location scouting is the key to a successful production. I used this video, which I shot with my iPhone, to help me develop a game plan for my lighting setup. AJ and I, along with Cassie, our assistant director, spent an evening walking the set, discussing camera angles, lighting setups, and our schedule for the shoot. You can see from this video, our set is in the office space that is in the middle of construction. As I am looking around the space, I'm paying attention to two important factors that will influence my lighting choices. The first is what does the available light look like? Is this something I like? Is it something I want to work with? Or do I want to replace it? And secondly, where can I access power? How many outlets and circuits are there? And what is their amperage? To determine the circuits and their amperage, I took a look at the circuit breaker. Fortunately for us, we had plenty of 20 amp circuits to work with. After determining that I wanted to bring in my own lighting for the set, I needed to see if there were any lighting issues that I needed to address with the set. So I turned off the lights and had a look around again. With lights turned out, I discovered that there was one light that seemed to be hardwired on. We couldn't find a switch to it anywhere. And this room was going to show up in the background of our shots. So I had to make plans to cover the light. The other thing I noticed was that the outside light was leaking in from under the door. So I'd have to block this light or frame it out. The last issue we had to address was set design. Although this is not lighting related, everything in the final frame adds up to complete the image. So we walked around the rest of the complex to see what we could add to the room to help provide texture and additional clues to the backstory of the film. And here you can see the blue shelving unit that we used. It's covered in dust which was perfect for our needs. On the day of the shoot, we just made sure to fill the shelves and add extra set dressing that we found laying around to complete the look that we wanted for the film. So here we are setting up for the first shot of the day. With the lights in place, we're almost ready to roll. Early on, AJ had discussed wanting each character to have their own color of light, so I chose to go with green fluorescence and blue moonlight. However, for this production, we were not interested in being subtle, so we went with a bolder choice of using old steel blue in place of CTB and special steel blue in place of green fluorescence. The practical fluorescent was wrapped with special steel blue. As you can see here, I also had a couple of fluorescents that I gelled for use on the close-ups. In the back room, I placed a redhead with a frame of 250 on it to create a warm glow on the back wall. I also put it on a dimmer and shaped the light further through the use of a flag. This not only helped to provide depth to the shot, but the orange light helped to provide a color contrast in the final image. If you want a color to pop more on screen, Providing a splash of its opposite color helps the eye to have a contrast reference, making the color appear stronger than it actually is. Down the hallway and out the door are two more redheads, each of which are gelled with old steel blue. I carefully placed objects against the stand of the light outside the door to help hide the stand. The objects break up the outline of the stand, fooling the eye and making it indistinguishable in the final shot, even though it's in the middle of the frame. Some of my favorite images and lighting setups come from the last section of the film. Here I turned off the lights that, that I was using for the close-ups and left on the lights in the background. The only additional light comes from the 150 watt soft bulb in the practical that our main character carries with him. All we had to do was give our actor a mark to hit with the light and then let the light play through the rest of the scene. Lighting is one of my favorite aspects of being a cinematographer. As you have seen here, not only can you get away with a lot in a creative dramatic piece like this, but many times there are creative solutions to lighting problems that arise on set. It's just a matter of being prepared before the shoot and then being willing to think outside the box when you face a problem. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Lighting Alchemy. Until next time, get out there and shoot. Keith, get off, you bastard! Get out.
can't be tied up more. Yeah, oh, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, look, they're coming to yeah. get us, so let's just stay here and wait These for them. These ropes aren't tight enough. <laughs> well, I'm just going to end up on the internet. <laughs>